Hello everyone and welcome to Grade Up. My name is Ashish Shawat and I'll be discussing with you reinforced cement concrete. In the earlier lecture of introduction to RCC and basic concepts part one, we learned about the cover to main reinforce cover to reinforcement and uh, characteristic strength of concrete, acceptance criteria and types of mixes. Now moving on to the next lecture here, introduction to RCC and basic concepts part two uh, will be uh, will be starting now. So first topic is elastic modulus of concrete. Okay, so uh, Young's modulus of elasticity, as you all know from strength of material. Uh, Young's modulus of elasticity is equals to a longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. Now, for concrete, this modulus of elastic modulus, uh, there are three different types of elastic moduluses defined. So, first one is initial tangent modulus. Now, initial tangent modulus is slope of the tangent drawn from the origin. As you can see from this figure, this particular, this one is the initial tangent modulus from origin. Uh, whatever the tangent is drawn and it is known as initial tangent modulus. Now second is tangent modulus. Now it is the instantaneous modulus. Uh, uh, it can be denoted at any particular point. Now any required point it can be drawn and uh, the value of the tangent modulus can be obtained. It is the slope of the tangent to the uh, sigma e curve. So this is the tangent modulus. Now the third one is second modulus. Now second modulus is uh, it is it gives total stress by total strain. So from origin to uh, the point under consideration, uh, you join th these two points and obtain the value of stress and st corresponding strain. So by this you get the second modulus, the slope of the line joining any point of sigma e curve to origin. So this is the second modulus. Okay. So uh, these three stresses are defined. These three moduluses are defined for concrete. Moving on, now some of the important points regarding the elastic moduluses which often come in uh, examinations are as per IS 456-2000 the elastic modulus of uh, elastic modulus is equals to 5000 under root FCK. Now there is uh, as per IS 456-1978 uh, the elastic modulus was 5700 under root FCK. So, it has been uh, from 1978 uh, with the amendment in 2000, the elastic modulus was changed to 5000 and root FCK. So, in examination either uh, sometimes they, they give this and sometimes they give to get uh, to make candidates confused. So, please remember these two, thi these two things. Now, this value, this value of elastic modulus uh, EC is short term static modulus of elasticity. Now, what do you mean by short term here? Short term here means that Creep effect is not considered here. Creep effect is not considered in this value of EC. You will have to consider separately for long term loading. Now static modulus of elasticity implies that this, uh, this value is valid only for static loading and not for the dynamic loading. Okay. So this EC value is short term static modulus of elasticity. Now the EC considered is value of second modulus at stress sigma is equals to FCK by 3. Okay, so these three points are worthwhile to mention here and remember them. Okay, now uh, if now uh, as I already mentioned that this value of EC does not consider creep. So if we take the effect of creep, then the long term modulus of elasticity EC becomes 5000 under root FCK upon 1 plus theta. Okay, so this is the short term static modulus of elasticity and this factor divided by 1 plus theta gives the long term modulus of elasticity. Okay. So, theta here is creep coefficient. As per IS456, the creep coefficient for different time of uh, loading is given. For 7 day loading, it is 2.2. For 28 days, it is 1.6. And for 1 year, it is 1.1. These three values have been specified. Okay. Moving on. Now, what is creep in concrete? Okay. So, what is creep? Creep is a long deformation due to long term loading. Okay, long loading for a very long time if you are applying on a structure then there occurs deformation in that particular structure. So, as you can see from the diagram here, this is a column. Okay, so it is subjected to a constant compressive load. Okay, so this instantaneous, this value of 
deformation compression in column occurs this is the elastic deformation which occur instantaneously on application of load okay but this particular portion of deformation from this level to this level this is creep deformation and it takes time to uh, get deformed to this level okay so as evident from the definition here creep is the time dependent deformation due to a constant stress acting over the material for a long period of time okay so this is creep so there are uh, in particular in totality you can see that two types of deformations will occur elastic and creep in every structure which is subjected to prolonged loading okay so moving on now creep curve now this you can see is creep curve it is this is time after loading and this is strain okay so initially when you load it okay so strain occurs from this uh, some elastic strain was inherently available in the uh, material so when you load it the uh, material the strain develops up to this point now on unloading instantaneously some of the elastic recovery some of the instantaneous recovery of strain will occur this is known as elastic recovery okay now after uh, elastic recovery uh, if you keep it uh, keep the structure in the same condition creep recovery will occur okay so this recovery takes time this is not instantaneous okay so some creep recovery recovery will occur okay and after that the, it will the graph will become again the strain will be also uh, become constant so this is the irreversible creep which we cannot uh, we cannot uh, restore structure to its earlier strain value okay some of the some of the strain will definitely uh, um, keep on acting in the structure so uh, if we read this out if the load oblique stress is removed after some time the entire strain elastic strain is recovered instantaneously okay so this el elastic recovery occurs instantaneously and some portion of creep is also recovered but it takes time okay so this creep recovery will take time while some strain is left as it is it is permanent deformation okay so this was about the creep curve now we'll be talking about the permissible stresses in concrete and steel okay so first of all we'll be talking about concrete now concrete uh, in uh, there will be two cases here tension and compression now in tension there can be direct tension by the uh, application of load axially like in case of uh, um, in case of a beam subjected to axial load and uh, there can be bending tension okay for, uh, subjected to transverse loading uh, will give rise to bending tensile bending tensile stresses okay now in case of compression will be uh, uh, there can be a direct compression and there can be a bending compression direct compression will be in case of columns and bending compression will be in case of transverse loading okay of beams so you can see here the direct tension sigma ct is used in water tank design okay so water tank are designed with a uh, working stress method uh, working stress method and uh, this value of direct tension sigma ct is used in water tank design now the bending tension fcr also known as modulus of rupture is used in wsm to find the cracking moment okay so working stress method makes use of bending tension the direct compression uh, sigma cc is used in the design of rc rcc columns okay so rc columns will be using direct compression in wsm the bending compression sigma cbc is used in analysis and design of rcc beams subjected to transverse loading okay so this table it is very important one okay so this is uh, these are the grades of concrete here i'm uh, starting from m15 moving till m50 okay and uh, this is the these are the tensile stresses these are the compressive stresses so for direct compression sigma ct uh, the m15 is 2 2.5 m15 for m15 the sigma ct value is 2 for 20 2.8 3.2 and so on you can see here from here to here the it is increasing by 0.8 and for any further cases it is increasing by 0.4 so it can work as a tip for remembering this okay now bending tension it is equals to 0.7 under root fck this is modulus of rupture also known as modulus of rupture okay so if you work that out from 0.7 and root uh, fck 0.7 and root 15 will will give you 2.71 and so on okay now uh, compressive stress direct compression sigma cc value it is for m15 it is 4 for uh, m20 it is 5 and so 6 and so on 8 9 10. 
uh, you can remember here, uh, you can see here that for 15, 20 and 28 is 4, 5, 6, then skipping 7, you will be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay. So, you can remember this uh, in the form of a trick. Now, bending compression here is, it is roughly equal to FCK by 3, okay. So, FCK, you can roughly remember it by FCK by 3. Now, 15 by 3 is 5, okay. Then 20 by 3 is 6.67 uh, or uh, rounded off to 7. Okay. So on you can remember for other other grades of concrete. So this table here is quite important when you will often get objective questions in a lot of examinations. Okay. From either uh, modules of rupture or bending compression. Okay. So moving on. Now permissible stresses in concrete and steel we are continuing with this and now moving on to the steel reinforcement. Okay. So, type of steel reinforcement, there are various types of steel reinforcement which have been used over the years and are being used uh, currently, okay. So, type, uh, type, first one is mild steel. Now, as you all know, mild steel, the tensile strength of mild steel Fy is 250 MPa and permissible stress in WSM. For WSM, roughly uh, you can obtain this value by 0.55 Fy, okay. So, you can remember this thing, okay. So, it will give roughly about 137 point uh, something and uh, rounded off to 140 okay the properties of mild steel are it is having a high ductility but low strength okay so uh, due to its high ductility it is often used for earthquake resistant design okay now uh, moving to the medium tensile strength the tensile strength fy is 350 and the permissible stress in wsm is 190 okay so it is having medium ductility and medium strength okay now moving to HYSD, high yield strength deformed bars. Now there are two types of this, 4, 415 and 500. Now for 415, the permissible stress is 230 and for 500, it is 275. Now the properties are low ductility, high strength. Okay. So it is having high strength but comparatively low ductility if we compare it to mild steel or medium tensile steel. Now the latest and the most popular these days is TMT. TMT is thermomechanically treated bars. Okay. So, uh, for tensile strength 415 and 500 are the two categories here, similar uh, permissible stresses as in HYSD 230 and 275, they, these, these are same as in HYSD, only difference is in the properties, properties the TMT bars will be having, okay, so in uh, something like this, the cross section of TMT bars will look like, some, look something like this and it will be having a hard outer core, this will be a hard outer core and soft sorry this will be having a hard outer surface and this will be soft core okay so the hard outer core uh, gives the uh, high strength to the uh, steel and the soft core will give the high ductility so uh, it is having uh, both high strength and high ductility so uh, due to this property it has become very popular these days and it, it, it is being used on a widespread manner and replacing all other types of steel okay now yield strain in uh, ctd ctd cold treated uh, dye bars hysd high yield strain deformed bars and tmt is thermomechanically treated bars now the elastic strain it is fy by es okay you can uh, see this from the stress formula itself this is the stress this is the modulus elastic modulus okay and the proof strain is 0.00, .00. so total strain at yield becomes this yield becomes Fy by Es plus 0 0.002. Okay, so as you can see from the disc, this is the stress strain curve of uh, steel. Now moving on, moving on to the uh, gate question of the questions here. You can see now the first question says for M25 grade concrete with creep coefficient 1.5, the long term static modulus of elasticity expressed in MPA as per the provision of IS 456-2000 is. Now, this, this question came in 2016 uh, morning session. Uh, we will solve it here. Okay. So, short term modulus as we all know is 5000 under root FCK. This is short term. And long term as we all, long term EC, as we all, so, in uh, PPT, it is 5000 short term modulus of elasticity divided by 1 plus theta. Okay. So, 
EC, this long term EC becomes 5000 under root 25 upon 1 plus 1 1.5. So, EC becomes 5000 into 5 divided by 2.5. If we cancel this out with 2, it becomes 10,000. Okay. So, answer is 10,000. So, for this question, answer is 10,000. Uh, it is to be noted here that it is asking long term static modulus. Okay. So, do not confuse it with short term static modulus of elasticity and give the answer with this, with just this formula. You will have to use this formula here. Okay. So, moving on to the uh, next question, modulus of elasticity of concrete specified in IS 4562000 is based on. Now, this question came in gate 2014 evening session. Okay. So, the moving on to the options here, uh, the first option is tangent modulus, second option is initial tangent modulus, third one is second modulus and C is chord modulus. modulus. Okay. So, as we saw in the PPT, the answer to this question will be second modulus. Okay. So, uh, second modulus is the right uh, option for this particular question. So, this was all about the introduction to RCC and basic concepts part 2. In the next lecture, we will be uh, uh, learning about the uh, working stress method of design. Okay. So, thank you and uh, have a nice day.